Okay, fifth graders, today we are going to work on the paint portion and choose our color pattern for our pop art self portraits. So everyone will have transferred their um, important details of the face onto the clear film. After you have done that, you're gonna remove the um, background, the printed out photo of yourself, and you're gonna work from the back. So flipping the paper over to the back, um, you're going to apply color. You're gonna need to choose from a color pattern. So the color pattern choices um, are going to be a warm color pattern, which would be red, orange, and yellow, a cool color pattern, which would be your blues and greens and purples, or if you'd rather do a pop art, which is um, red, yellow, and blue. Those are your choices. So I have chosen a cool color pattern. So I have greens, blues, and purple. I also have white because there are some areas where you will be using white. So I'm going to begin with painting the white. So I'm going to need to paint white on the sides of my eyes, the teeth, and some hair highlights. When you're painting, um, please choose a fine tip brush for the smaller areas and uh, paint carefully. So the sides of my eyes are going to become white. Okay. The other area that is going to become white are my teeth. And if you um, have braces, don't worry, the highlights of, or the um, Sharpie lines will show up on the other side as braces. So you don't need to go over those with black or anything. Okay. And the other area is hair highlights. Now I know it looks kind of weird from here, but you can see as you turn it around, it'll just pick up the Sharpie lines. Ooh, that looks really weird. Okay, so some hair highlights. Hair highlights is optional if you wanted to do that. It just kind of creates some depth. So if you wanted to go over like a few of the lines where you've created um, texture within your hair um, with the Sharpie lines, you can do that as well and just kind of create some highlights. If you have curly hair, you could do some white highlights um, in the direction with the lines pattern direction of curls and then that would show the illusion it would kind of give the illusion of the texture of um, the hair okay so a few hair highlights so that is the white areas sides of the eyes the teeth and the hair highlights okay so paint solid color so now I need to move to a solid color so I'm going to either rinse my brush or because it is white I could probably just take a paper towel um, and do a dry wipe on it paint solid color my eyebrows iris lips shirt and hair so you really need to be focused as you are doing this and think carefully where you want to place each of those colors before i do this i'm going to decide what my background color is going to be because you're not going to paint your skin so you want some contrast between whatever color you're going to paint all of the other elements and what color is going to be showing through the back for your skin so if i am having like a blue show through for the back for my skin, I'm probably gonna stick with mostly the greens and the purples. Um, so I will start with my eyebrows. So I recommend whatever you paint your hair, paint your eyebrows the same, um, just because your eyebrows are an extension of your hair. They are uh, fine hair on your face. So if you're painting your hair, it just kind of unifies it and ties it together a little bit better. So if you're painting, then you're gonna go through, you're gonna pick up the purple, it's okay. And it actually looks nice if the purples and or the color, whatever color you have chosen, blends in um, with your whites. It just creates different values of that and more interest. Okay. So I'm working my way down, painting the hair. Make sure as you're painting, you paint your hair with your brush strokes in the direction that your hair goes. If you do not create your brush strokes in that direction, it makes it look like you have not brushed your hair that day. All of these things are really important to keep in mind and consider as you're painting. Okay, so now I have almost completed my hair. Now the next thing you're going to paint is, I'm trying to go fast here, you of course will take more time. Okay, the next thing you're going to paint is, moving down the line, 
eyebrows, iris, which is the area um, on the outside of the whites of your eyes, your lips, and your shirt. So I can either be done with purple. Since I've done so much purple between my hair and my eyebrows, I'm probably going to do my shirt green. I may decide to um, have my lips be purple as well. So let's see how that looks. So I think I'll do my lips purple. And again, this is a pop art self-portrait, so it's not realistic. So your lips may be green. Um, the only thing I would say to stay away from is if you are doing um, a warm co color pattern or the pop art and red is one of your color options, um, stay away from making your eyes red. It just looks kind of creepy, to be honest. So um, just keep in mind, keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm going to move to green. And I could do a different shade of blue, but I want there to be a little bit more contrast. So now I'm going to move to green. And again, just paint over it because remember, we're working from the back, so the black will still show through. Got a little bit of paint on the side of my hand. You need to be careful as you're painting um, that the area of the hair is a little bit tricky. You kind of have to work with your hand in more of an upright fashion than having your um, the side of your hand touching the paper. Okay, that and then my shirt. The areas that you are not going to paint, that you're going to leave completely unpainted, are your skin. So every area of your skin you will not paint. So as you can see, I'm not putting any details around my nose. Um, I'm not putting anything <clears throat> like on the side of my, um, this is like a sleeveless shirt on the side of my shoulder, nothing on my neck, because those colors will be picked up from the background paper. So once I am done painting this, I'm gonna double check. Did I paint my eyebrows? Yes. Did I paint my iris? Yes. Lips? Yes. Shirt and hair? Yes. Do not paint the skin. So this will be a finished product. You'll bring this over to the drying rack um, to dry. So after you have done that, you're gonna bring it to the drying rack and then you're going to move on to painting the word that you chose to represent yourself. So you'll make, need to make sure that you sharpie outline that. You'll also work from the back. I have not finished it, but and then I'll take a look at my color choice. So I only have a little bit of green within my portrait, so I may choose to do the word entirely green for some contrast to stand out. If you have questions on what you think might be um, a good color, come check in with me and I can help offer suggestions. Just to give you a sneak peek of when it is dry, how the color will transfer. See how nice it looks with the highlights? The reason we don't paint the skin is when it's laid over the top, the pattern that we create will give the skin um, the, the color from the back. Okay, so the task today is to get your the back of your face, all of those important details painted, put on the drying rack, and then paint the word. All right, here we go.